myself. Once upon a time, there were two teachers who just could not agree. If one said to their students, the sky is blue, the other would say, it's gray. If one taught that it's better for a child to let their parent enter a room first, the other would say it's better for a parent to let their child enter first. If one thought a visitor was not worthy of their time, the other would treat the same visitor as an honored guest. If one taught their students to punish wrongdoing, the other would teach forgiveness. Now, despite their opposite approaches to the world, these two teachers would listen to each other. They might not agree, but they always listened and even referenced the things the other had taught. One time when they were in the middle of an argument that had already lasted them many years, they heard a booming voice call out from the heavens. One of you is right about this. And the other one is also right. Mm -hmm. From that time forward, it became common for people far and wide to reference both teachers when making decisions about their own lives. This might sound like a fairy tale, but it's the story of Hillel and Shammai, the sages whose teachings are enshrined in the Talmud and on whose opinions so much Jewish identity and practice are based today. And that voice from the sky, you guessed it, it was God. Hillel and Shammai are great examples of opening oneself up to the teachings and opinions of others. And not just any teachings and opinions, but specifically ones they disagreed with. They not only listened, but sought to understand the other's position. They learned each other's teachings. They even on occasion changed their minds. Judaism doesn't often give us one answer when two or three are available. Ours is a tradition that requires discernment. It demands that each one of us listen to many voices and understand them all as we make our way forward in the world. It's easy to hear the voices we know we agree with. We can understand them without a huge amount of effort. But that's a different path than our Jewish tradition lays out for us. Judaism is what I call yes and a way of learning and living and believing that is complex and even contradictory. We have a God who is both punitive and loving. We believe in a world to come and also a life that can only be lived in the here and now. We have texts that tell us about the peoples we are to detest and even meet with violence. And we have texts that teach us there is nothing more important than welcoming the stranger. Judaism is the tradition of Hillel and the tradition of Shammai. While we may only agree with one of them, our tradition challenges us to hear and understand both. We live in an increasingly polarized time. You know what I mean. Yankees fans and Red Sox fans can't even look at each other anymore, let alone listen to one another. What can Hillel and Shammai and the nature of Judaism teach us in a world of social, social media, and even news media echo chambers? How do we find ways to listen even to those we disagree with? We can look to the world of business where executives like Ray Dalio and Warren Buffett actively seek advice from people who disagree with them. Dalio has said, the most powerful thing that you can do to be effective is to find people you respect who have opposite different points of view and have an open-minded exchange with them about what's true and what to do about it. We can look to the world of community engagement where Joan Blades has founded the Better Arguments Project, which she describes as inspiring people to connect across differences so that we can understand each other care about each other and work together where we actually agree. We can even look to the world of law and politics where 
despite disagreeing on nearly every issue under the sun, Justices Antonin Scalia and Ruth Bader Ginsburg famously cultivated a decades-long friendship. If I were giving this sermon next week or the week after, I'd probably also share an example from Abraham Lincoln's presidency, but since I'm only two chapters into Doris Kearns Goodwin's team of rivals right now, I'll save that for another time. But we do have one other place to look, our prophetic tradition. Open your gates, the prophet Isaiah tells us in this week's Haftarah portion. Open them to all who might enter. We need not believe or worship or act or vote the same way to welcome someone into our gates. As our colleague Rabbi Rachel Timoner writes, no one is going to tell us what to say, what to do, or what to believe. Freedom requires conscious choice, and choice is its own burden. How do we choose well? We can make a good choice, a conscious choice, only when we are conscious of having a choice. So that only happens when we open our gates and listen to the voices that call out around us. You may notice that I haven't mentioned the week's Torah portion, Parashat Kitavo, yet. Now, this portion is a litany of God's injunctions. And the moral of this week's story is that we ought to listen only to God. I admit it is a strange parasha to tie to a lesson about listening to a range of voices. But right at the end, just before the portion is over, the Torah reminds us that God has given us eyes and ears, minds and hearts. God has equipped us to take in information and to consider it all. God created us to discern. God even tells us that when one person is right, at the same time, another can be right too. It is up to us to open our eyes and ears, our minds and hearts, and to make our choices good ones. Shabbat Shalom.